1975. Since 1973, the rock band known as KISS have, has left its mark on the rock and roll era. The band consisted of four original members, Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, Ace Frehley, and Peter Chris. By the mid-70s, the band had begun their rise to fame, not only with their music, but also their outrageous and over-the-top concert performances. Uh, Ace Frehley shot lasers out of his guitar. Uh, his guitar caught on fire later. That was both pretty cool. And then um, Gene Simmons, who I always liked, was um, breathing fire and actually kind of flew around a little bit while he was playing his bass. Over their rock band career, Kiss has been awarded 28 gold albums, the most of any rock American rock band. The band has also sold more than 40 million albums in the United States alone and over 100 million records globally, making them one of the most successful world rock bands of all time. By 1975, KISS had already started their rise to fame with their Dress to Kill tour. One of the stops on the tour was at Ohio Northern University. This was a monumental concert as it was the first concert to be held at the recently established Kinghorn. The concert attracted both college students and locals alike. The concert attracted people from all over the region, some from as far away as Wasson, Ohio, a nearly two-hour drive north of Ada. 16-year-old Ben Eicher and his friends had seen Kiss open for the James Gang a few weeks earlier in Toledo. We just completely were blown away on March 28th, and so we were eager for them to come back. So the way we found out about it was we went to Toledo to buy the new album because we knew that was coming out because the magazine said so. And, you know, it's like, hey, there's a con they're coming to concert down in Ada on uh, the 9th of, of May. So we buy the album, and it was just a, so we had to buy the tickets then, too. We got the tickets. In his journal, Ben records that he and his friends bought their tickets on May 5th, 1975, the day that South Korea surrendered to North Korea. On the day of the concert, Ben recorded many of the facts about the event, including the fact that Rush was a no-show. He also wrote songs played and Kiss's special effects. I later found out, to my great surprise, that it was in Ada that Kiss first it was the first time they ever played rock and roll night and party every day. A lot of people who probably, it almost seemed like myself being the first concert I ever went to in my entire life as being very high strung and a lot of screaming and yelling and carrying on and you know a lot of college students. The main doors out by the flagpole off the parking lot was where the main door was and they were actually checking for alcohol and stuff at that door but I just don't remember that being the case at the back door and I think they weren't prepared for that. You know, the, the whole draw of the concert was come to see these face-painted rock and roll group, you know, that had really sprung up within the last couple of years, and, and I think that was probably why we went, but when we got there, I think a lot of the focus was on the crowd, what the crowd was doing, how the crowd, crowd was reacting around us. Uh, I do remember that, you know, most of the time during the concert we were standing, uh, there was just no way to sit down because everybody was just doing a lot of screaming, a lot of singing, and you know, especially when KISS came out and did their pyrotechnics, and there was just a lot of pandemonium going on. They had two big torches on each corner of the stage, and when they were rocking, they would blow the flames up, and they actually went clear to the ceiling and scorched the ceiling oh, black. Wow. The pyrotechnics that they did uh, on stage caused several thousands of dollars worth of damage to the building, and it was a lot of years, I think, before the, uh, the university was willing to come back with another concert. Uh, after the concert, I heard rumors that the sheriff at the time had come into the concert and tried to, to uh, confront some people, and he ended up having a beer bottle thrown up against his head. After the concert, according to Peter Chris's autobiography, the student council didn't have enough money for them to have a hotel, so they ended up staying in the dorms. The drummer reports it was one of the most memorable experiences at Ada as he stayed with two crazy science majors who had made their own LSD. They offered him some, but he declined, and instead they opted to do smoking pot all night. It was definitely an experience of a lifetime, to be honest with you. Being Kiss and being here in Ada, you know, people just look and say, God, they were actually here. And say, yeah, they were here. To this day, Kiss's legacy continues to grow throughout the world, acquiring fans from its every corner. The unparalleled devotion and loyalty of the Kiss Army is a statement to the band's unbreakable bond with its I think fans. I think for any rock band from the 70s, 60s, 70s, and, and early 80s from my era, I believe they've really, really done the 
the best they can do as far as entertaining the people, and they have kept a constant, you know, constant fan following for as long as I can remember. I just don't think that this campus will ever see another concert like that ever. You show us everything you